of know my favorite way to game. It's cozied up in a blanket on a couch in a horizontal, <laughs> horizontal location. <laughs> Probably why me and many other people correlate cozy games with the Nintendo Switch. Cause you can literally take it everywhere. You're not stuck with playing on your TV and you can be all cozied up and comfy. <laughs> Nintendo's got their branding down. It's cozy, it's aesthetic, everything's just so cute. Anyway, hi everyone, it's Lara Laya, and today I'm gonna be sharing my five favorite cozy games that I'm playing at the moment. And I'm sharing them in no particular order, so don't go ranking them. They're all an enjoyable time. They're all in my book, a favorite in my heart. Just like parents with their children, you can't rank them, can't play favorites. Well, you can, but it changes. So here we go. Let's get into it with my recommendations. We are gonna start off with Dredge. And this one has kind of been making the rounds recently. People have described this game as like an eldritch horror-esque type game. It was recently released, but I feel like everyone's been talking about it and with good reason. The way I describe it is a cozy fishing game with awesome art, but with a little bit of mystery and a little bit of horror just to get your heart racing. Not to get too cozy, just to raise that adrenaline a little bit. But really, I hate horror games and I love this one. It's such a unique art art style and the music is so cozy. The fishing is so relaxing. Basically, you're kind of fishing and collecting creatures and selling them off to upgrade your boat, to get better fishing nets, get more space. And the mystery of what is really going on in this dredge universe kind of just keeps me wanting to play. Even with the moments of scares with terrifying fish. Creepy, creepy fish. <laughs> really, I've been blowing through this game. There's a reason everyone on YouTube is talking about this game and it's just a good pile of fun. The game length is about nine to 10 hours with just focusing on the main quest, but there are side quests. And the current price of the game is $25. Definitely recommend it. Next up, I'm gonna be talking about Disney Dreamlight Valley for those fans of Animal Crossing. And I've heard maybe Stardew Valley, Disney Dreamlight Valley is definitely up in your alley. <laughs> Did not mean to make that rhyme. I would say it's Disney's own version of Animal Crossing kind of everything you can do in Animal Crossing, you can do in Disney Dreamlight Valley. Um, essentially, it's a simulation adventure game where, you know, you as the main character are kind of the leader of this valley and there's multiple different Disney characters from all the movies have quests for you to do and slowly move into the your valley. Just like Animal Crossing, the game is really customizable. You as the player, you have your own home that you can design the inside of and you slowly can buy furniture or you find furniture, you can design your own clothes clothes or you have clothes that you can switch up. So character customization is in there. You can also design the layout of your valley. And as you, the game progresses, you can slowly unlock new areas and new Disney characters. There is farming, mining, crafting, venturing, cooking, really anything you can think of. <laughs> One thing to note about the game is that it is currently still in early access. So there are bugs around, but the development team, they release hot fixes. And with every major update, they're fixing bugs. And when new bugs occur, they're getting those addressed. So I think they're doing a great job on that front. And the nice thing as well is that this game has major updates throughout the year that introduces, you know, new story and new characters. It'll continue evolving as the longer it's out. Again, it's still in early access. I think it's going to be out of early access later this year. It's a fun, cozy time. It's really relaxing. It's one of those games if you just like to get caught up in, you know, doing menial tasks and living a virtual life. It's one of those. <laughs> so currently as it stands, the gameplay length is 30 hours for the main story. But again, it's constantly being updated and new story and characters are added. And then there's multiple side quests and other things as well. I definitely have way more than 30 hours in the game. So, and cause it's early access, there is a price to it at the moment, it's $30. It will be free to play when it launches. But that $30 price tag that you're paying to get access to it in early access does include additional items and you get a certain amount of moonstones, which is like like the in-game currency. So because it'll eventually be free to play, there is in-game purchases that can happen to buy additional customizations, but they also make it so you can earn moonstones while you're playing. So you don't necessarily have to buy anything. I don't feel pressured to spend money to get moonstones because you kind of build them up naturally. It's a good one to play, a good one to get lost in. Recommend it if you love Disney and you're looking for something new. My next game is Spiritfarer. This game was released in 2020 and I I'm just getting 
into it now. It's so cute and cozy. The art style is like a 2D storytelling. As the main character, you become the spirit fairer, whose job it is to, to fairy spirits of the deceased to the afterlife. So it sounds a little morbid. Build a boat community and there has farming, fishing, building, crafting, cooking, you know, all the things that we love in these types of games. And there's some world exploration. There's really cool like jumping and gliding mechanics that make it also really fun. And it's described as a indie adventure game or a sandbox action management sim. Whatever words trigger you that you're like, oh, I like this, then <laughs> one of those will suit your need. <laughs> like all these cozy indie games, the art style is cute. The music is cute. The story is cute, though just a little bit depressing, obviously, because you're ferrying these spirits to the afterlife. So you build relationships with these creatures and then you send them on their way. Overall, love it. The gameplay is about 25 hours long for just the main story. Like all of these games are side quests, additional things, so you could play it for much longer. And the current price of this one is also $30. Next! Another game that's been out for a little bit, but I've just kind of dived into and I'm loving is Cozy Grove. There's a theme. I seem to like the same type of games. Don't judge. We've all, <laughs> we all have preferences, but it's again a life sims game. I would say is a cute creepy camping game. You as a player, you'll wander the island, find secrets, find ghosts. You're on a haunted island. You build up your camp. Like all of these life sim games are is fishing, campsite designing, exploration, crafting, decorating, everything we love in a video game. There's a cute sketched art style that is just so adorable. The game is pretty long. It's the longest game on this list in terms of main story. It's about 66 hours and there's side quests and other things to do. And the price is very nice. It's only $15 at this time, so recommend. Finally, switching gears with my last game. It's Dwarf Romantic. This game came out last year. It is a city building puzzle game. So completely different style than all the other ones that I have recommended. There's hexagonal tiles that you're trying to place to uh, continue to get more tiles and you're trying to match up rivers, lakes, cities, and you get little like challenges. There's also different game modes. So you can play, you know, the challenge one that you're constantly trying to get more tiles by placing the tiles correctly. There's also a a customization one where you can just build whatever you want. There's different biomes too. So there's like a snowy one. There's like a dark moody one. There's one that's like pink and cherry blossoms. It's very aesthetically pleasing, very fun to play, very chill, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> it's a great way if you don't want to play a story game and you just want to relax and build something or work your brain a little bit with a little bit of a puzzle, totally recommend. Since it isn't a streamlined game, there is no real play time. I would say the gameplay is endless until you get bored of it. I don't know. <laughs> but the current price is $15. Very good deal. And that, folks, are my five cozy games that I'm playing right now and that I recommend to get for the Nintendo Switch. They're also available on a multitude of other platforms. Let me know if there's any cozy, relaxing games that you're playing that are on this list and that you would recommend. I'd love to hear it in the comments. I'm always looking for a new game to play. And if you like this content and want to see more of it, please hit that like button and subscribe. Catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.